here it is this is the raw this is the real this is it but let me stop procrastinating so i wanted to share my testimony i wanted to share how i got here how i got here and what the rest of 2025 is going to look like and just take you guys on the journey with me because I felt like so many things happened where I couldn't take you guys on the journey with me in 2023 and 2024, which if you guys would have saw those into where I am now, it would have blow your mind. But let's start here. Let's start with what we have and let's start here. Why and how I got here? Why is my relationship with God so important? Why do I feel like I cannot do anything without my Lord and Savior? Because I couldn't. For all of majority of all my life, I felt like there was always like blockages, roadblocks, just things that just happen. And I found out that me wanting to be loved, seen, heard, nurtured, didn't come from people or people pleasing. It came from God. It came from fully devoting myself to him. And so backing up, I think what got rough was I moved down to Charlotte 2008, 2007, 8. I am not a believer, but my background is my grandmother's Catholic. So I grew up with knowing God, grew up with, you know, once they know me, they'll never depart from me. So he was always there, but just I wasn't as I am today. So I'm sitting here and we're now in Charlotte. We're now in school. We're now in this new city coming from New York. And I am walling out. <laughs> not like really bad, but like walling out, like to the point where it's definitely not of God, but I, God is far from me. So at this point, I'm about 19, start dating this guy starts taking me to this like really cool church. They asked, I love Joyce Myers. And I started watching Joyce Myers. I was in my living room at my mom's house. And Joyce, after like one of her prayers, um, after her sermons like that she would do, I don't know, this one day, like I just either finished it or did it. Now that I look back, I'm like, did I not finish her sermons? Because I pretty much probably would say that 99.999 she says the sinner's prayer at the end but i don't think i finished them that same day i literally just i asked god hey i'm here i'm a sinner you are my lord and savior you know i believe in you that's not how it goes but that's what i did in the mid nobody was around it was me and joyce myers me and the tv Joyce Myers in my living room. And when I tell you the shot came through my soul and the Holy Spirit entered me to the point where only on TV I would watch people just running up and down the stairs and, and the Holy Ghost filled in. And I'm like, what is going on with y'all? Y'all look so crazy. But it's very real because I didn't know what it was, but it was all throughout my body. Like, all throughout my body to the point where I was literally running up and down and, and shaking my hands. And from there, I never looked at people having the Holy Ghost any different. <laughs> so let's fast forward because now we're in the faith, right? We're learning, but we have a boyfriend, but we're literally lukewarm. And as Laura says, I will spit you out. So I'm still lukewarm. So I'm going throughout, let's say, now we're 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. We're still lukewarm. We're listening to Christian music. We're, we're reading the Bible. Where we're literally only reading Psalms. Um, and then one day my mom 
tells me, hey, we're going to this church. Um, I would love for you to go. And at that point, I was like, oh, my God, my mom's going to a church. The one that said that she was going to walk the straight and narrow before she came to Jesus. I got to go. Who has changed her mind? What pastor changed her mind? So we go to a church called Elevation. And as we're at Elevation, you know, my mom is just immersed in this pastor and this church. And I was like, oh, my God. And it's so cool. And the music's so cool. And we were there when there was no, like, church, like, building. So we were at the YMCA and we were folding up chairs. And so I kind of saw the evolution, how elevation grew. Um, and, you know, I loved it, but still, I'm lukewarm. I'm in the word, but not in the word. I'm, I'm, I'm in e groups, but still doing sinful things. So I'm literally just lukewarm just still in this world and and then saying oh my god jesus you're my lord and savior and like not even devoting myself so i was in church i'm dating another guy at this point i get pregnant and i don't know where i feel like i have lost my mind at this point postpartum really hit extremely bad and i don't know why my right mind didn't say well come back to jesus like come back to jesus no my mind and a person that walked into my life said hey why don't you go to a new moon ritual with me this is what happens when satan as it says in the bible has a foothold so you've been lukewarm in your whole christianity and now because you people please and because you want this self-acceptance and this love I'm going to bring all these people around you and they're just going to confuse the crap out of you. And so from there, I was like, oh, well, that might cause and, and heal all of the stuff that I've been like feeling like I'll just go there because all the other stuff is not working. No, because I didn't 100 percent give Jesus my 100 percent. That's why I didn't work. But I digress. So now we go to new moon ritual. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm feeling some stuff. I'm like, oh, okay, things are things are working. I'm manifesting now. I have all these crystals around my house. My baby now is born, so technically I have given my baby over to this type of world, but you know, it's nuts to me now. But I was in it and I was in it heavy and I really thought but when I was in it, I would always ask God, God, if this is not of you, just let me know this is not of you. And it would be silent, completely silent. There is things in new age spirituality that it's a facade. It is being in it, being in it. And I mean, I'm not deep, deep, deep in it, but now with my spiritual eyes open on Christ, there was people around me that were spirits that were trying to pull me away from who I'm, who I'm destined to be, let's say, who God wanted me to be. And as I sit here and I look back on like, wow, like this is crazy that we just get pulled in all different directions when we're not rooted in Christ. So new age as what you go spirituality, I mean, I get it. People want self, but that is not it. Um People, and I, I, I pray that I say this the best way that I can, because why do we see all these witches now turning to Christ? Why do we see all the people? Because they know that that is a facade. They know that they've been tricked. They've been bamboozled. So I'm there. I have my crystals. I'm 
feeling certain things. I have my my multivite, which is like making my hormones crazy. But I've noticed something, something very pivotal in new age and believing in the one true God is that you will never find joy, peace, self-control, groundedness, all the fruits of the spirit, you're never gonna find them in new age. You're never gonna find them anywhere. So as I miss new age thinking like, oh my God, it's doing this grand old thing and I'm manifesting all this stuff to me, why would I manifest something that is already going to be mine? God already made my plans. But let me take you back. In my head, I'm manifesting all these things. I'm, I'm there. And as I'm sitting there and questioning, I'm noticing something. I'm still upset. I'm still cussing so bad. I am so overweight. I am still miserable. If that was the one true God, wouldn't you think that all of your problems, not even problems, but wouldn't you think you would feel better doing those things? I felt worse. I'm over here like, I felt more energy drained manifesting in, in crystals and moon water and all these things to just get where get where more confused more in shambles <laughs> more cussing more anger more rage everything that is not of the spirit so i you know, that was during like, co like COVID time, you know, and so the world is like shifting and I'm still in it and something just shifted. I started kind of watching church again, going back to church again, still have my crystals on, still doing my moon rituals, but it is a process, you guys. It is not a one day turnaround thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm starting to watch sermons. I'm starting to have like my e-group. I'm starting to um, get into like conversations with my friends. And at that time, now I'm starting to feel, hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm still a little confused, but there's a peace. Some type of peace is like coming in here. So I go to Texas, I come back, and I find out that I no longer want to be in the relationship that I'm in. And I tried to articulate this all last year, as I'm doing right now, and it just would not, it just would not happen. I would cry, I would be in shambles, I would be so mad and hurt, all of it. But for some reason, everything has its place and its time. And I feel like even as I'm talking right now, I can hear myself talking. I'm like, girl, you're just articulating this so well. And I'm just baffled. But this is the glory of God, you guys. Like, this is when you're connected because I could never do this in spirituality. I could never do this with other gods. So I'm sitting here and I'm like, I need to go. As soon as I said, okay. I'm about to leave this um, apartment and I'm about to like blow up my whole life. And this is just the amount of money that I had. When I tell y'all, I didn't run to anything but Jesus. And that is like what happens on our deathbed. We're on a deathbed and we're like, Lord, come back. Like, oh my God, I'm dying. And it, it's like, you got like, you know where to go. It's like, it's like, the GPS just turned on all of a sudden. You just know where to go. And I'm like, dang, like all this time, because 
prior to me leaving, I stood in the closet and I started praying to God and I said, God, I'm not leaving this closet until you tell me what to do. But when you are so far away from God, like think about like longer than that, but like this far, it is very hard if this is me and this is God, like for you to hear what it's, there's like blockages before it gets to you. So I heard nothing. And I felt like he was just sitting there like, what are you going to do? Are you going to take this leap of faith? This is not the life that I wanted for you at all. At all. But everything works out for his good. All things work out for his good. So I'm like, all right, Lord, I'm about to leave. It was very hard for me to tell him that I was leaving. It was good at first. But then it got rough because we have a child. And the whole point of all of this is you're in new age for absolutely no reason because you're still miserable and you're going to continue to be miserable because there's only one way, one truth, one life. There's one and when you find that way back home, when you come back home, you will realize my peace, self-control, joy, happiness, contentment, love, seen, all falls on Jesus, all falls on him. So it was very hard. The, the journey of leaving the relationship, barely having enough to survive, but every single day, and as you guys can see right now, I'm still alive, right? Nothing killed me, right? So every single day, God carried me. Every day, he carried me through not having enough finances to getting loans to, you know, still fighting my way out of debt right now. Um, but the provision of him, but most of all, let's just give God praise that when I was lost, now I'm found. When I didn't know who I was, now I know who I am. When I didn't know what my purpose was, and just thinking, oh, Vogue Beauty is just vain. It's just this. It's just that. To now seeing the purpose of this business. To being patient and grateful, as my note right here says. Like, being kind. Let's not forget kind, because that is the fruits of the spirit. I'm, like, trying to dome them off my head. But being kind. You're not kind in New Age spirituality. But it was rough. I mean, there was times where I was in places with witches, let's say, right? That I'm coming in out of new age, in, back into a devoted relationship with God. And I found myself literally bleeding for like months. And it was because this witch attached herself to me. And with that witch, I just thought through a normal eye that the witch was just coming to help service the client with me. But in all actuality, it, she was draining and doing witchcraft on me while we were sleeping side by side. And I had to break that. I had to break generational curses. I had to break things off of me that just, I didn't even know I was fighting. I had no idea I was fighting. You're in this rat race in, in New Age spirituality that no one needs to be in and God doesn't even want you to be there. Now, coming back to the father was not easy. It was not a, oh my God, you're back. Yay, let's go. Here's all your blessings and everything that you pray for. Mm -mm. No, no. Remember, we serve a God, a God. We're like this little compared to God. Because he is God. He is reverent. 
and we should all be scared of him pretty much like in a good way but we should just be ashamed and i cried for months stating that like literally as i read the bible i'm like oh my god i literally was like bowing down to a rock like a rock compared to a god that can do immeasurably more than you ever imagined why would you why would you do a rock why would you think a rock was going to save your life the big slap in the face that like coming back was jesus died for you and didn't even know you bro like died for you someone died for you didn't even know you and you're out here wondering why you're not loved because you're loving the wrong people you're loving people that's number one and you're loving wrong people you need to love jesus because he's the one that died for you he's the one that actually took a bullet let's say for you let's like like let, let's make it relatable he's the one that actually took a bullet for you and you're out here just now nah, i'ma just love these crazy people that's love that's unconditional love someone that dies for you someone that sees that you are so beautiful read psalms 43 if you ever have a chance to because the way that he spoke to me and said i love you and i would trade anything for you jesus that's the love that we all yearn for now i want to cry it's literally the love that we all yearn for. And we sit here and we want all these other vices and other things. And I'm telling you, they mean absolutely nothing because your life, your life, everything that you hope for, everything that you imagine, Everything that you wanted. It, God is not genie. God is not a magic lamp. But God loves you. Think about a moment in your life when you really, really loved somebody. And you really, really loved them. And you found out their favorite color. You found out their favorite food. You found out their favorite everything. And so you just poured out stuff to them. I'm going to cook for you. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And you just kept on doing it. But let's say they just kept on turning their back on you. Or vice versa, they kept on pouring into you. Someone pours into you, you just keep on loving them even more. So that is kind of... That is what God does. My daughter keeps on loving me. My son keeps on loving me more and more and more. Well, I'm going to keep on pouring out more and more and more because remember, our father is with us. He's very much alive, but he's not in physical form right now. So how else can he show you I'm a provider, I'm a healer, I'm all these things? It's to say, the more you're with me, the more you understand me, the more it's literally like so simple, but it's so hard at the same time. It's just obey and repent, turn away, repent, turn away from your sins. But you do beat yourself up. But I do want to say this, that throughout all this, it's like, remember, I'm knee deep into spirituality, okay? And I Still said, nah, I'm running home. I know the way home. I know that this ain't it. And I know the only person that can save me and can shelter me and can provide for me and can do all these things is my Lord and Savior. Because I'm about to be out in this world by myself, nobody. And I mean, going through custody with people, going through custody with my ex, family not helping not one bit um not even a hey how are you how are you doing 
um, spirits on them. Don't make these videos. They're going to make you look crazy when he takes your baby away from you. That's nuts. And he can't. Why? Because God. Because throughout all of the turmoil that I went through, God was letting me heal. God was letting me rest. And I would never trade another, I got to do jump through 15 million hoops to get something answered, or I have to, to cut myself or to sacrifice something when I don't got to sacrifice nothing. I sit here and I pray, and that is the direct line to Jesus. Now, man, I can't wait to just keep on sharing with you guys like from this point on, because from this point on, when the Lord told me, listen, there's more coming. Listen, there's things coming. Listen, there's the obey me. And the way that he talks to you is actually kinder than you talk to yourself. That's how kind of, you know, it's him. He's way kinder to you than you are to yourself. So I'll leave you with this because that is, that is, that is the testimony. That's a very short version of my testimony, but I feel like this is, this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning.